พบกันเป็นประจำทุกวันเสาร์ตั้งแต่เวลา10นาฬิกาถึง12นาฬิกาสดๆจากสนามมวยเวทีลูปินีครับแน่นอนครับว่าคุณผู้ชมสามารถที่จะรับชมสดๆได้นะครับทางหน้าจอช่อง7 HD กด35ทางออนไลน์สามารถรับชมได้ทางช่องทางของ TikTok, YouTube, Facebook ของเทโรดิจิตอลและก็แฟนเทคไฟครับวันนี้ครับกติกาบอยไทย3ยกเหมือนเดิมนะครับสนุกสนานตื่นเต้นเร้าใจตลอด2ชั่วโมงต่อจากนี้ไปแน่นอนคุณผู้ชมสามารถที่จะรับชมได้นะครับย้ำอีกครั้งหนึ่งครับถามกันเข้ามาเยอะนะครับว่ามวยรอบรถทูวันไทยแลนด์ซีซั่นที่2จะมีการตัดเชือกกันวันไหนนะครับแจ้งให้ทราบว่าจะพบกันในวันเสาร์ที่23กันยายนนี้ครับที่สนามมวยเวทีลูปีดีแห่งนี้ครับกติกามวยไทย3ยกของเราครับวันนี้มีนักมวยจากหลากหลายชาติเข้าร่วมแข่งขันนะครับไม่ว่าจะเป็นอุซเบกิสถานอิหร่านจีนและประเทศไทยของเรานะครับและที่สําคัญครับถ้าเกิดมีการชนะน็อกเกิดขึ้นไม่ว่าจะเป็นอาวุธอะไรก็แล้วแต่นะครับก็จะได้รับโบนัส 10,000 บาทครับจากแฟนเทคอุปกรณ์โดยเสียบรรจงพุทธราบบทวงนั่นเองทั้งหมดทั้งมวลนะครับความสนุกสนานตื่นเต้นเร้าใจอยู่ที่นี่แล้วนะครับตลอด2ชั่วโมงของเรานะครับช่วงนี้พักกันแป๊บเดียวก่อนครับเดี๋ยวกลับมาและสมสกัดกลับมาที่สนามมวยเวทีลูบินีครับนี่คือแฟเทคไฟมวยมันพันเอ็กซ์ตีมครับสิ้นสุดการรอคอยนะครับคู่เปิดหัวของเราวันนี้เป็นพิกัดน้ำหนัก58กิโลกรัมกติกามวยไทย3ยกยกละ3นาทีนักชกบุมดังจากจังหวัดลบบุรีจักนารายลูกเมืองเพชร
Hello world, welcome to Lumpini Stadium for another edition of Veritex Fight. Here at the Mecca Muay Thai, the Madison Square Garden of the East, Lumpini Stadium. Walking into the ring now, we have Jack Narai, Luke Mung Pet, the 22 year old stands at 177 meters, 50 bouts to his record, 35 wins, 15 losses. So just getting the action underway here at Lumpini. Of course, Fair Tech's fight every Saturday from 10 to 12 Thai time. Myself, Matt Lucas, commentating alongside of Joe Comerford. So we have seven exciting bouts of Muay Thai action lined up for you today. Very excited for the main event as we see the return of Opposite. Opposite KT Jim now at Fairtex Training Center. Spent some time in Canada at DCS, DS Combat Sport. Also a Channel 7 regular, so we turn it over to our MC for today, Mr. Pong. Here in Thailand, it's not uncommon to see young athletes, most Thai fighters starting at a young age, developing on the grassroots Muay Thai shows, often out in the provinces on the what we call Muay Wat shows or the temple fight shows or the local stadiums out there. So it's fantastic to see the grassroots development starting to come out here to the city stadiums of Lumpini, of course, the Mecca of Muay Thai. Compayak just getting the last minute bits of Vaseline and preparation to three rounds of battle here on Fairtex Fight. As Matt was saying, every Saturday, 10 a.m. tight. Here we go with the tail of the tip, Kampayak Pet Jinda versus Jack Nalai Luke Mung Pet. And today our MC Mr. Pong, a very famous MC out here in Thailand, was believe associated with Muay Siam for a number of years. Muay Siam for those of you out in internet land was the daily newspaper the daily newspaper here in Thailand that served news up for Muay Thai uh, the paper went under a few years ago and then a lot of the reporters moved on to other positions in the industry Mr. Pong a famed reporter so here we go with the action, the first round. Both athletes about the same size, testing each other out as well. I believe Pet Jinda is a military gym. A lot of strong fighters from that gym. I've seen them regularly in the past. Kampayak there. Nice tape there from Kumpayak. Just using that left kick, just throwing it up, not even switching it. It's very good strategy to rack up the rack up the points and not use too much energy. Mm. 
Yeah, going for that leg kick as well there, the red corner. And that left kick can damage that front arm and get the wooden man of fame, the 90s Lumpini athlete would often kick high on the bicep, kick towards the top of the shoulder. And then as you kick, the arm drops and also it gets a bit more slippery. So you aim the same spot, but it slides over onto the neck. Jack Nye on the back foot. He's edging backwards, trying to draw Kompayak into his kicking range. Just waiting, waiting, waiting. But I do think Jack Nye needs to be first to the punch a little bit. Sort of waiting a little bit too much, letting Kompayak fire off. He's a bit flat-footed as well. Jack Narai could use the with a little bit more movement. Ooh, good punches though. Very hard punches there. And looking to box Kampayak's head off. Again, that really utilizing that front left leg very, very well. The red corner. Ooh. Nice left kick there from the red corner. It's almost effortless the way he just keeps throwing that left kick up. Yeah, I like that right cross after that. He deflected the left kick. Good pattern switch there from the red corner. He does a good job of loading up that rear punch. Ooh. And he's, oh. Oh. Right on the bell and right on the button as well. Just like the 80s sitcom Saved by the Bell. So we'll go and have a look at some of the replays here, ladies and gentlemen. Good solid round from both fighters. Beautiful left kicks by both Kompayak and Jack Narai. There's some of those, that boxing that Matt was talking about from Jack Narai. Big, heavy looping punches. And that front elbow, lead elbow, straight through the guard from Jack Narai. You can see he really loads up on the punches, Jack Narai. But also Kampayak deflecting some of it and then dropping Jack Narai just in the dying seconds of the first round there. There's DJ Sanook always bringing the tunes, the good vibes here at Fairtex. And of course, Sanook in Thai means fun. So she's always bringing the fun vibes here. So we'll come into the second round of our first fight this morning. Jack Narai Lukmung Pet versus Kompayek Pet Jinda. So round number two. So Kompayek Pet Jinda in the red corner. Jack Nolai, Luke Mung Pet in the blue. Body shots from Jack Nolai. Think he senses weakness in Kampaya. You can see nothing but bad intentions in Jack Nolai's eyes now as he offloads some of those punches to the body. Now, I think he needs a big second round here. Well, not considered a knockdown, I would say that last second blow did stun Jack Narai. You can see he's starting to go to the body of Kompayak. Maybe he senses weakness in the body of Kompayak. Offloading some of those heavy punches. Sort of moving forward a little bit more. We did see Kompayak sort of wince down and drop his elbows into his body. There he goes again. I think he is trying to protect his body a bit more. You can see him switch, starting to switch stances as well. Maybe that leg is a bit battered as well. Mm. You can see Jack Narai just biding his time to offload some of those punches, weathering the storm, weathering the kicks of Kompayak. <laughs> He's got to be careful because, you know, you can't weather the storm too much. The storm will come to you, especially with some of those left kicks that Kompayak is throwing off. Eventually, the arm will drop. 
it can come over the top. Just as we were talking about before, kicking up onto the bicep. And you can already see Jack Narai's arm starting to drop a little bit. I've actually had an athlete that I was cornering have his arm broken because of those left body kicks. He didn't block any of the shots and the kick kept coming and it broke his arm. Similar to when Tawankai recently fought here at Lumpini. I think he broke a carrot's arm. Mm. I, I've actually had that happen to me as well. I fought a tie in Sydney and I got dropped because I thought my arm was broken. Just kicking up on that arm and, and the, the volume the high volume of kicks it really hurts mm. so fighters have to be careful about you know not blocking and just taking the damage yeah, beautiful, beautiful beautiful this, the echo of that kick just ferocious so we'll go and have a look at some of the replays from the second round bit of a slow round but still some very High damage from Com uh, Kompayak. Yeah, I felt he did a better job in that second round. Went to the body of Kompayak, Jack Narayim. I think the blue corner had a stronger showing. A bit more diversity, but the left body kicks from Kompayak, very, very exquisite very efficient as well if you were in Kompayak's corner what would you be telling him I think I'd probably be telling him to keep choking on with the same game plan blasting out that left kick probably try and stay away from the hands of Jock Narai as well I do feel like the body and potentially the conditioning of Kompayak is not quite so high no, and I do think it is a difference in age as well. You know, Jack Narai being in his early 20s and Kompayak only being 16. Looks like Jack Narai really wants to bring it now. Yeah, there is that 10,000 baht knockout bonus from Fairtex equipment. Oh! Whoa! Oh, he just kicked him in the head! <laughs> He's offloading some of those punches now. Yeah, and Jack Narai in serious trouble. Kompayak in to win it now, I think. Just the, he's been listening to Matt for that 10,000 baht. <laughs> yeah, it's a decent payday. It can almost double the purse size. He was definitely rattled by that head kick, Jack Narai. Kompayak just biding his time, trying to find the space for it again, I think. You see how Kompayak shells his arms up when the body shots from Jack Narai comes in. And the intensity slowed down a bit. Oh! oh. Big drop from Jack Narai there. It's saved by the ropes, I believe. Surprised they didn't give an eight, eight count for that, but I suppose he got up pretty quickly. Yeah, sometimes if you bounce right back up, they won't necessarily count it. It's also the referee's discretion. Oh, that big body shot and followed by the cross to the head. Kompayak being in the pocket there is really where Jack Narai wants him. Can offload some of those ferocious punches. Just trying to push him back into the corner. Oh, again, these heavy hands from Jack Narai. Kompayak needs to get out of that corner. How is Kompayak still standing? And he's getting bish, bash, and bosh. Really rocking that head back from Jack Narai. Those, those punches are just so heavy. There's 45 seconds to go here. Jack, Jack Narai really needs to mix it up a little bit, though, to set up those punches. He's coming in a little bit readable. Oh, but I don't think Kampayak read that overhand right. 
I'm not sure he's going to be able to read after some of these hard punches from Jock Narai. And you can see Kampayak looking up at the clock. He's stalling for time here. He doesn't want to engage with Jock Narai anymore. Ooh, bam! Oh, bit of a snaky. <laughs> oh, oh! I'm very surprised that the referee didn't give him a count after that first knockdown. But you see Kambaya getting sat down. I think that's going to be it. And that is the end of the fight. Very interesting couple of rounds there. Of course, Kompayak coming into the first round with very strong left kicks. Then the second, Jack Narai working the body a bit with his heavy punches. It was very, very tit for tat in regards to the scoring. So it'll be interesting how the judges score this one. Kompayak pretty standing in his own there in the third, but Jack Narai really offloading those heavy punches, dropping the young Kompayak. And yeah, we can see in some of the replays, those heavy punches rocking the head of Kompayak. Uh, really bobbling the head of Kompayak. That overhand right, dropping him. เอาละครับคะแนนอยู่ในมือผมเรียบร้อยนะครับผู้ชนะชนะไปด้วยคะแนน 28-28 ไทยน้อยผลผลิตเยอะกลับมาที่สนามมวยเวทีลูบินีครับนี่คือแฟเทคไฟท์มวยมันพันเอสตีมครับโอ้โหคู่แรกจบไปอย่างสุดมันเก
and our professional cut man team just checking the equipment on the athletes. There's Steve Mack there applying the Vaseline as well. Professional boxing trainer. Here we are representing Thailand is Yod Pakorn Sit Dr. Samram. The age of 22, Yod Pakorn stands at 165 centimeters with a fight record of 51 fights, 39 wins, 11 losses, and one draw. So I'm interested to see what Yod Pakorn brings today. He gets his last minute of water. And of course, representing Rent Up Muay Thai over there in Malaysia. But representing Thailand today. Of course, Rent Up Muay Thai has very strong athletes coming out of Malaysia who often fight on one championship. Young Johan Ghazali coming out of Rent Up Muay Thai. So, very strong team. We'll throw it over to Mr. Pong. The fighter in the red corner from Milan, Mohamed Ramay Sani. And the fighter in the red corner, in the red corner, Yod Pakorn, Sid Dr. Samran. Here we go with the tail the tip. Yad Pakon sit Dr. Samran versus Mohammed Ramazani. So Iran versus Thailand for this one. Yad Pekorn looking a little soft around the middle. Not quite as soft as some commentators I know, mainly myself. I thought you were having a dig at me. Oh, God, I'm pretty soft around the middle myself. <laughs> Maybe Yod Kapoorn's been taking my nutrition tips. <laughs> but he probably does have the experience going his way. Yeah, coming in with a fight record of... 51 fights and 39 wins. I'm expecting pretty good performance from him. It's a lot of experience, 50 fights. Probably even more, to be honest. Yeah, but that experience is in Thailand, and usually against fellow Thai, so the rhythm and way of attacking is a bit different. Mohammed, a more jittery, has that nervous energy to him. A lot of the Iranian athletes also have more of a kickboxing background. Yeah, often their, their boxing is very sharp and they've got a lot of knockout power. They tend to come in with high volume and a bit of lateral movement as well. You can just see Muhammad is just sticking to him, not letting Yod, Yod Pakorn fire off. Trying to mitigate some of that room there. Mm. Yeah, Mohammed very, very fast, but great counters there from Yad Parkorn. Digging to the body there, the Thai athlete. He's got to be careful though, because I've just noticed Yod Parkorn, when he fires off a punch, he drops his hand quite low. Mm. Oh. 
coming in with the elbow there, Mohammed, and getting a smile from Yadpikorn. I think Yadpikorn might have worked him out. And see there the referee getting the athletes together. He wants to see more action. They only have three rounds, so not a lot of time for a dilly dallying. Yopakorn's doing that very, very classic tire style, just waiting for his opponent to fire off the counter, draw him into the kicking range. Oh, beautiful body kick there from Yopakorn. Again. Lock, lock on the body to shut down some of that punching power from Muhammad there. Regain composure and fire off where he's more comfortable. He's got to be careful he doesn't get backed into the corner, though. Not a lot of room to move out from that corner. So we've got dying seconds of the first round. That is the end of the first round. So we'll go and have a look at some of the replays. Very interesting round there because... Muhammad was coming in with just pure aggression as Yodpakorn sitting on the back foot, waiting to fire off on the counters. Pretty classic tyre strategy, in my opinion. So there we see Muhammad really trying to fire off, using his power. Yodpakorn just waits, times it. Throws the kicks off to the midsection there. Of course, Muhammad needs to block some of those kicks. Because once the kicks start to rack up, the gas from the midsection will start to deplete. What do you take away from that first round, Matt? I think if Mohammed is able to continue this pressure, he might be able to just gas out Yad Pekorn. We'll see how the Thai athlete does as we begin this second round of action. You can see there Yod Pekorn's breathing a little bit heavily when he was coming back from the corner. So perhaps some of those punches have depleted those energy stores. Oh, heavy punches there from Muhammad. Oh, rocking that head back from Muhammad. Very sharp boxing from the Iranian. Oh, sharp elbow as well and into clinch here. You can see Yodpakorn just waving that right hand. Feels like he's going to try and throw it, telegraphing it a little bit. Oh, digging to the body and coming up high to the head there, Yodpakorn. Oh, good right body kick there from the Thai athlete. Oh, beautiful right kick there. Swinging the whole hip into it. And it's a Yodpakorn's corner giving him strong instructions. Sit and kick. Mohammed coming in with high volume there. Pushing Yodpakorn back into the corner. Yopakorn looks a little bit worried. Yeah, I understand that as well because Mohammed isn't really stopping. He's not really letting up in terms of his aggression. Yeah, he's just sticking to him. Oh, he's beautiful exchange there. Sticking, sticking to him like a fly to a pie. And Jad Pukorn has shown some sweet science. Good punching from him in the last few exchanges. A little wild and wide, but landed its mark. 
Then again, the referee saying that's the second time. He wants more action. And Muhammad's doing a very good job of just sticking to him and not allowing any firing room from Yod Pekorn. I would like to see... I would like to see Yodpakorn put on the pressure himself a little bit instead of just sitting on the back foot all the time. Try and push the pace a little bit. You can visibly see that he is tired. Oh, nice shot there from Yodpakorn. Locking the head back of the Iranian. Yeah, that last one had him beat. You can see both fighters are very tired now. Very open mouth, spitting the mouth guards out. So we'll go and have a look at some of these replays from that second round. Nice punching from both. Matt was talking about the sweet science. Yodpacorn came out a little bit better from some of those exchanges. However, um, Muhammad doing a good job with those slicing elbows. Boom, bam, from Yad Bikorn. Nice right body kick from the Thai athlete as well. He definitely had some stolen moments there, Yad Bikorn. Be interesting to see what happens in this third round, whether Muhammad can still put that relentless pressure on. Or whether he's out punched himself it takes a lot of energy to relentlessly push through like that okay so here we are for the third round of our second fight this morning Yodbukorn Sikh Dr. Samran versus Muhammad Ramazani representing Cyrus Jim Oh, nice right body kick there from Yad Pekorn. Beautiful kick. Bit of wrestling there. Oh, beautiful left kick as well. You can hear that from the commentary box. I love that when, when Thai athletes, they throw their whole hip and nothing but bad intentions to the whole kick. Nothing that excites me more than seeing a beautiful left kick. And Muhammad just continuing to push forward with his relentless pressure. Mohammed trying to get an angle on Yad Pekorn, who has grabbed the ropes. We'll see if the referee saw that. Yeah, and there, the referee giving him a warning for that cheeky grab of the ropes. Oh, nice long knee there from the Iranian. Mohammed, or Yad Pekorn, definitely looking a bit fatigued here. Oh, wobbled. Lock in the body now, looking up at the time. It's usually a telltale sign of fatigue. Yopakorn on the back foot, just waiting, trying to draw Muhammad into his kicking range. Muhammad really looking for the knockout, I think. Swinging some of those punches wildly. Throwing everything but the kitchen sink here this morning. He edges forward, edges forward, tries to fake a little bit. But I think Yodpakorn's experience is able to read that. Beautiful reply there from the tie. Leaning back, kicking back. Beautiful stuff. We're winding down the fight. Just 30 seconds left. On your unofficial scorecard, Joe, how do you have this one looking? I think just from... Damage and uh, damage and style. I'm gonna give it to Yodpakorn. However, I'm a little bit torn between the two. I think it's quite close because Muhammad's pressure is something to look at as well. What about you? What about you, Matt? 
Yeah, it's all about effective damage, and you know, I think it's can go down to the judges and see what shots they've seen as most effective. We're gonna get, get to see some of the replays of the big shots in that last round. Yeah, I just think the kicks from Yodbakorn were more damaging. Whilst whilst Muhammad's pressure was very relentless, I don't think his punching power really upset Yodbakorn that much. And I think Yodbakorn's timing was just on point to really mitigate some of that punching power from Muhammad. Yodbakorn so did grab onto the ropes. We saw it in one of the replays. And in close fights, those minor fouls and minor infractions can cost you the fight. So we go to Mr. Pong with the judges' report. ครับตอนนี้คะแนนอยู่ในมือผมเรียบร้อยนะครับและก็เป็นอีกคู่หนึ่งที่เบียดกันสนุกตื่นเต้นเร้าใจจริงๆครับและผู้ชนะในคู่นี้ได้แก่ The Winner in Black Corner นักมวยทางด้านของมุมดำนะครับ The Winner in the Black Corner ก็เป็นทางด้านของโมฮัมหมัดรามาเซนีจากอิหร่านนะครับที่เบียดเอาชนะทางด้านของยอดประกรณ์สิทธ์ด็อกเตอร์สำดานไปได้ยินดีกับผู้ชนะเป็นกำลังใจผู้แพ้นะครับช่วงนี้พักกันแป๊บหนึ่งก่อนครับเดี๋ยวกลับมาเชื่อใจเจ้าของบ้านเชื่อมั่นกลับมาลุ้นกลับมาเชียร์กันต่อนะครับนี่คือแฟนเด็กไฟมวยมันพันเอ็กซ์ตรีมครับและแน่นอนครับว่าที่ถามกันเข้ามาเยอะว่ามวยรอบรถภวันไทยแลนด์ซีซั่น2นัดตัดเชือกจะเกิดขึ้นเมื่อไหร่มีคำตอบให้นะครับจะชกกันในวันเสาร์ที่23กันยายนนี้ครับหลังจากรายการใหญ่ของวันลูกนีในวันศุกร์ที่22ครับต่อเนื่องความมันกันไปเลยเสาร์ที่23กับนัดตัดเชือกมวยรอบรถภูวันไทยแลนด์ซีซั่น2ส่วนคู่ที่3ของรายการวันเราวันนี้นะครับในพิกัดน้ำหนัก67กิโลกร,รัมยังเป็นกติกามวยไทย3ยกยกละ3นาทีนักชกมุมดำจากอุซเบกิสถานเซอร์โซสเกบุยเยฟเฮ้ยเราไปกันต่อในบัลล์ที่สองเอลิสบาร์โบซาหรือเซอร์ซาดกิบบูส22 year old standing at 181 centimeters 10 bouncers record with 10 wins So just a few last minute preparations as we go into the ring. The command team making sure the athlete has the mouthpiece in and of course the final bits of Vaseline attached to him. 
So into the ring we go with the next fight announcement from Mr. Pong. Representing China is Zhang Bin. The age of 20, Zhang stands at 185 centimeters. Very tall young man indeed. With a fight record of 10 fights, 8 wins, and 2 losses. It's good to see a lot of Chinese athletes coming out at the moment. They often come in with very strong boxing. Of course, Sambo being a big combat sport over there in China. So often they're quite strong in the grappling sense. Strong boxing, strong kickboxing. Zeng gets the last minute preparations. Of course, Matt was saying about the professional cut team, cut man team here at Lumpini, working a lot of the shows like One Lumpini, Fairtex Fight. Zeng sealing the rope, sealing the ring. Ooh. ทางการมีการนอกจากเพื่อนะครับจากได้รับมุ่งหนึ่งหนึ่งบาททันทีนะครับจากแฟนทิกวิคิปเมนต์เสียบันจงบุตรราบวรโลกครับมอบให้ท
that basic one-two. If I was Zheng being the taller of the two, I would be walking forward, putting my hands up, digging deep, and just locking on to Shazad's head, mm. driving those knees up the middle. The issue, of course, is a lot of the Chinese athletes are not that adept in the clinch, and mm. Zheng might not even be aware of that sort of style of fighting. There's a clinch, a little bit of the clinch work, and Shirzad quick with the elbow. Big one, two. Again, that southpaw cross. It's about 15 seconds to go here. He's really loading up that oh. lift. Ooh. And the mouthpiece coming out there from Shirzad. It might be a little bit of a sign of fatigue. He did come after one of those knees to the body. Zhang hanging on the ropes, though. Not necessarily a good look from the Chinese athlete either. And you can see in Zheng's corner there, his coach telling him to knee, knee, knee. Go forward and knee. End of round one. So we'll go have a look at some of these replays. Beautiful kicks there from Shazod. But as Zheng walks forward, sends that hand down the line, rocking the head of Shazod. But Shazod seemingly unfazed by firing off that southpaw kick, sending the rear hand down the middle as well, rocking the head of the Chinese athlete. Really using the left-right good night strategy. Just the old one-two straight down the middle. So we'll come into the second round of China versus Uzbekistan in this three-round battle. Shazod, TC Muay Thai versus Zhang Bin from China. And right into it, nice knee there from Shirzad to start things off. Yeah, coming straight in with the plum, dragging the head down, trying to drive that long knee up. Big teep to the face there from Shirzad. Again, coming in pretty fast with the hands. Zeng getting caught in the ropes, and Shirzad smart. He, he saw that leg go over the ropes, and he went right after Zeng. Oh, good strong punch there from Zhang. Beautiful body kick. Shazad's got to be careful that he doesn't get caught by some of those strong hands from Zhang. Zhang wants to send it. A beautiful lead parry there by Zhang. Pats the hand down, sends the right hand. Very slick boxing. Oh, getting mixed up here at Shirzad. Shirzad also looking a bit tired as well. I was just about to say that. You took the words right out of my mouth. Oh, leaning onto ropes there, Shirzad, just for a brief second. But these little moments are tells of a larger story. Oh, getting rocked back there, Shirzad. Looking a bit worrisome there for Shazad. He's on the really on the back foot now with his head rocking back and forth. Oh, that last shot really rocked him. Yeah, I think Zheng sees red now. He just needs to line up that right hand correctly. Also, probably attack the body as well. Sometimes, if the person has a real good chin, they're their body will be a bit soft. Like mine. <laughs> you can see Shazad looking for the spinning elbow there. Not quite finding it. 
giving his back up in the clinch a little bit. Left to right, kick, doubling up. Oh, oh the head yeah. rocked right back. You can see Jazod just holding on for his dear life there, locking the body up of Zhen. Zheng on the hunt. He needs to send that, instead of looping the punches, send that right hand straight down the middle. It's working for him. Just parry the lead hand down, send the rear hand down the middle. There is the end of the second round. So a stronger round there for Zheng, I thought. Just coming out a bit fitter of the two, I thought. Shazad looking very tired there in the second round as his head was rocking back and forth like a seesaw after some of those heavy punches from Zheng Bin from China. Yeah, there you can see, parry the lead hand down, send the right hand down the middle. Fundamentals, people, that's what works. Keep it simple. Beautiful work there from Zheng Bin. Just one, two, one, two, straight down the middle. There you can see Shazad was just locking up the body, trying to bite himself some time. There's a DJ Sanook, always bringing the fun to the party. So we're coming into round three. Shazad. TC Muay Thai versus Zheng Bing from China. And thank you, of course, to our major partners for today, Channel 7 HD and Taro Entertainment. Of course, our sponsors as well, Ute Sport Gear and Sam OT, along with Top One. And of course, myself, Joe Comerford, joined by Matt Lucas. We're here every Saturday from 10 to 12. And I have a sneaking suspicion this fight might end a bit early. Zhang will get a 10,000 baht bonus from Fairtex equipment. Nice yeah. little payday that would be. Mm. Zhang on the hunt here. Do you think he has it in him to finish Shirzad off? I do. I do. I really do. I think if he parries that lead hand down and sends that right down the middle like I've been talking oh, about. Oh, oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. And he's legs. on skate. Yep, he's on ice skates. Skating on a sea. Yeah. Sea legs, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's looking like Disney on ice at the moment. Oh, looking a bit... Oh, yep. Yeah. I think Zheng needs to bite down and send that right hand down the middle. No, testament to Shazod's chin. He's taken a lot of damage this fight. Yeah, again, copying another right hand from Shazod, or Zhang. Zhang looking very tired as well. He's been eating a lot of powerful kicks there from Shazod. So it's only any wonder that he is tired. You can see Shazod lo locking up. Trying to run down the clock. Bit of a veteran move, that one. Just one minute left here in the final round. Oh, he's really on the hunt for that stoppage. Yeah, I'm not sure he's going to get it. I think he, he's giving Shirzad a little bit too much space all the time. Also, I think he is a bit outpunched as well. He's throwing some very heavy hands in the first and the second. It might be a little bit gassed there. Yeah. He just doesn't have the same pep in his punch anymore in Zong. Oh, oh. Caught him there. Shazad calling him on, but not sure that's the best of ideas. Both gentlemen swinging for the fences. Oh, oh. caught there. I would not want to be on the receiving end of that. Just a few seconds left and Shirzad on his bicycle. Oh, big retaliation punches from Shirzad. And that's the end of the final round of action.
Good sign of sportsmanship there. Both gentlemen hugging it out. We'll get to see some of the replays of that final round in just a moment. Here it is. Zhang on the hunt there. Was aiming for the knockout and he rocked Shirzad's head back repeatedly with that right hand. The Uzbekistani athlete stayed on his ice skate so was able to slide his way to the finish. We'll see how our MC Mr. Pong decides this one. เอาล่ะครับคะแนนอยู่ในมือผมเรียบร้อยเป็นคู่ที่ 3-1 ผลผลิตเยอะกลับสู่สนามมวยเวทีลูกพี่นี่ครับนี่คือแฟร์เทคไฟท์มวยมันพันเอสตีนครับเดินทางมาถึงคู่ที่ 3-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-6-
my partner. She's a devout Buddhist and often travels around to all the temples of Thailand. And most temples in Thailand will have a amulet that represents a special monk or perhaps a local hero that performed a miracle. It's kind of, if you're Catholic, it's kind of like a saint. You know, it's kind of the same thing as, you know, when you go to churches in Europe and they have uh, souvenirs or something like that when you go to a church in Europe. So we turn it over to Mr. Pong. So here we are in the red corner representing a Fairtex training center in Pattaya and Thailand is Yod Khao Klai Fairtex. The age of 18, Yod Khao Klai stands at 175 centimeters with a fight record of 33 fights, 21 wins, 11 losses and one draw. What can you tell us about Yod Khao Klai? He's a relatively new addition to the Fairtex stable. He fought here about a month ago and knocked out his opponent. So coming over to us, he was brought to us actually by one of the former trainers and out of Fairtex, Mac, who is now a trainer over in London, in England, in the UK. So what happens a lot of times is the trainers will be scouts as well and will bring in young athletes that they know of from maybe their hometown or you know some sort of level of connection and then they will bring them to the bigger gyms working as informal scouts basically the trainers นักคอนราชศรีมาครับรุ่งสยามชอโชคอำนวยและคู่เจ้าของเขานะครับจากประเทศไทยเช่นเดียวกันนะครับดิไฟเตอร์อินเดอะเรดคอนเนอร์ย
Young's oh. arm looking a little bit stiff this morning. Not quite as fluid as the Fairtex athlete. Of course. Oh. A little bit older as well, Rung Siam, 29 to Yotka Glaze, 18. Yeah, we've seen a bit of age differentiation this morning. Of course, the first fight was, I think, compact, was 16 versus his opponent who was 22. A bit of age difference here. Age versus beauty, as they say. Beautiful left kick there from your cow Clyde, just flicking it up with ease. He's definitely got the range and height on his opponent. I'm not sure that he's used it to his best advantage so far. Rings the arm, just head down, hands high, digging down, trying to disrupt your cow Clyde's distance. He does look very focused. And very careful of your cow Clyde's distance. Looking the body there. So dying seconds of the first round. There's a bell to end the first round of action. And a good acknowledgement by both athletes there wying each other. Of course, in Thailand, when you greet someone, you put your hands together in kind of like a prayer motion and you why them so you bow to them to say hello good of it acknowledgement of sportsmanship there by both athletes so here the replays step through lead hook there by rung siam yokao klai sends that kick to elbow beautiful work there by the young fairtex athlete So there we have it. What did you take away from that first round, Matt? I thought it was a pretty close first round. We'll see how things progress. Yeah, it was a bit hard to score that one, I thought. It was very close. Also an opening round, so we'll see what round two and three brings us. Beautiful left kick to Teep there from Yokao Klai. He's a pretty slick operator for such a young guy. Nicely timed Teep to the midsection there. Again, dropping in low in the clinch here. It's a very good strategy to Teep that low too, because it does does upset your opponent. Remember an old trainer of mine, Sing Payak, he used to say, teep, teep just below the belly button. Mm. And it's a very soft spot to be push kicked. Your cow fly is doing well this morning. Oh, beautiful knee there from Yog Kao Klai. Wang Siam trying to swing those knees in himself, but not quite damaging. He's not getting them up high enough to do anything. Oh, oh. I love that brazen to the right cross from the Fairtex fighter. Good shot from him for sure. There's a number of Fairtex stars in Jod Gauglai's corner, BM and Pat, both are on significant knockout streaks. Some nice hand control there by Jod Gauglai. Negating the distance. Looks like he's really trying to gun in the elbows, Jod Gauglai. Yeah, Rangsiam digging his head under the chin of Jod Gauglai. Bit of a veteran move as well. Oh, oh, short elbows there from Yad Gauklai. Not quite doing much. Just, I think, 
a, a little bit short of a distance to really do anything there. Very close. Enough to annoy Rung Siam though. Again, there's that glove in the face. Smart defensive work there from Rung Siam. A little bit of a late knee as well. Nice left kick there by Yokao Kwai. And I'm pushing that lead, out, lead hand out, trying to disrupt any forward pressure there by Yokao Kwai. Oh, long knee there from Yokao Kwai. Trying to sneak the upward elbow, chopping in with that outside elbow. And I feel like Rune Siam is starting to really wear these attacks. Nice skip in to rear elbow there, just in the end of the round two. So we'll go and have a look at some of the action replays. How did you score that one on your unofficial scorecard, Matt? Yeah, for me, on that second round, I feel like Yad Gao Glai really took it away. Well, not a lot of the elbows were super strong, I feel like they were effective. He had some puncturing knees like that last one. That beautiful one-two there. Just almost bracing with that jab and then coming over with that right hand. There's one of the short elbows. He did a long, uh, good job with his long guard as well. Just pushing the face of Rung Siam and then being able to offload the right hand. So we'll go into round three in just a moment. For round three, Yokao Kwai versus Rung Siam. Rung Siam. Rung Siam, sorry. Going hell bent for leather here, both athletes. And I feel like Yokao Kwai is a bit more determined, has a bit more energy to him. Yeah, I think Rung Siam's just come in a little bit stiff oh, in this fight, and there's and blood. blood. Yeah, pouring oh. out the nose. Dashing out of his nose. And it's difficult when the there is blood coming out the nose. You have to breathe through your mouth. Generally, you can't quite breathe as well. Everything becomes more labored. And you see Rung Siam holding on to Yad Gao Glai. A stalling tactic. Yeah, trying to run down that clock and survive. Oh, beautiful kick there by Yokao Klai. Straight through the midsection with a piercing knee as well to follow it up. Oh, almost kneeing him in the face again. Because he had Rung Siam bent over in the clinch there. Nice follow up to the elbow there. Elbow in the back of the head. Yeah, Rung Siam had his back turned. And Yuk Gao Glai really wants his knockout bonus. Oh. <laughs> He's like climbing I, on top of him. We'll be surprised yeah. if this goes the full. The distance. And then a beautiful clinch grip there. I wouldn't be surprised if the referee either calls this off or it gives Rung Siam a count here. Yeah, Rung Siam just falling to the ground. He's not quite firing back or fighting back. He's just merely surviving at the moment. Yeah, he's... I feel like Rung Siam is in a dangerous position here. Just might get himself more hurt. Yeah, there's a wave off. And an appropriate call from the referee. Just saving Rung Siam for additional damage. Dot Gao Glai was having his way with him in that third and final round.
So we'll see some of the replays, but it was one-way traffic. Yad Gao Glai storming over Brunxiam. The elbows coming in from Yad Gao Glai. And then when Brunxiam did attack, he just missed and the referee did the right thing, called it off. Preventing Rinxiam from taking more and unnecessary damage. We turn it over to our MC for today. เอาละครับได้แจกจนได้นะครับจากแฟร์เทคอิควิปเมนต์นะครับแน่นอนครับเหลืออยู่บนเวทีคนเดียวนะครับเป็นการชนะน็อกแบบ KO เสียเฟรมอริยวัฒน์บุตรราบวรวงศ์นะครับมอบ 1,000,000 แฟนมวยกลับมารับชมกันต่อนะครับแฟนเทคไฟท์มวยมันพันเอ็กซ์ตรีมครับประจําวันเสาร์ที่เก้าเดือนเก้าครับขอให้แฟนมวยที่ติ
So here we go into our next bout. Omar Mahari, the 30-year-old, standing at 182 centimeters, 30 bouts to his record, 23 wins, 7 losses. Training out Bizad Warrior Academy there with Bizad, the Iranian ambassador Bizad has brought, brought over 11 Middle Eastern athletes to Thailand. Uh, former fighter himself, Bizad. And there you see Steve Mack putting on the Vaseline. The major points to cover are the high cheekbones, the forehead, and then a little bit around the chin. So here we are in the red corner is Pet Udom, Kiat Udom, representing Thailand. Pet Udom is 22 years old, stands at 177 centimeters with a fight record of 136 fights. 114 wins and 22 losses. So quite <laughs> quite the amount of experience from Pet Udom and quite the differentiation in experience too. And 100 fights more than Omar. But as I've said before, not uncommon for Thai fighters to come in with that amount of experience as Thai fighters do tend to start younger than other athletes you know the grassroots development starting out in the provinces then coming into the bigger stadiums like Lumpini so we'll throw it over to Mr. Pong เอาล่ะครับคู่ที่ 5 in the black corner และคุณชมของเขานะครับจากประเทศไทยครับจังหวัดนครราชสีมาอินเดอะเรดคอร์เนอร์เพชรอุดมเกียรติอุดมผู้ชี้ขาดบนเวทีบุญเลิศแก้
Yotin FA group who likes to utilize that D lock and wrench the neck down. Good push kick there from Pat Udom. Popping the jab through. It's a leg kick there. Oh, good elbow as well from Pat Udom. I think some of those knees have really damaged Omar's body because he's looking a little bit worried there. Yeah, ooh. And he got into a dangerous position there in the clinch, was bent over in half. I definitely think some of the posturing from Omar is a bit suspect, in the clinch at least. Yeah, I would agree with that. And I feel also that front leg of Omar. Oh, bam! Short elbow. And Omar's eyes definitely unfocused as he rose to his feet. That was beautiful. Parry the hand down, step in with that lead elbow. Nice work from Pet Udom. Yeah, pretty classic Muay Thai there. We'll see if he's able to do it again. That's just that experience coming out from Pet Udom. There's that leg kick. And you see it's that leg is definitely injured. A little bit of worry in Omar as he goes back to the corner. Yeah, there was a bit of a concern in his eyes, I thought, after eating that big elbow from Pet Udom. So we'll go and have a look at some of the replays from that round. You can see early on Omar really bought the action, trying to set the pace early, work the body, work the top. But then Pet Udon weathered the storm, and then came through the clinch with piercing knees, and then that step in elbow. Beautiful work by the tie. Yeah, classic hand trapping into the elbow. It's so important to control the arms, and you see Pet Udom just grabbed onto the arms, <coughs> pushed it down slightly, and bam! There's DJ Snook, always bringing the good vibes here, making the mornings fun. So we'll come into the second round, see what happens. What do you, what does your crystal ball tell you, Matt? I think this one's going to go Pet Udom's way. I think the diamond of Udom is going to bring home a lot of pride to his hometown. Can you see it go in the distance? Probably not. But I am 100% correct about 21% of the time, so we'll see how things work out. Where'd you get those statistics from? As we know, 70% of statistics are made up. <laughs> On the spot. I thought it was 90%. Oh, There's another of those step-in elbows from Pet Udom. You can see Omar looping that arm around, trying to hold on. Oh, short elbow. Coming in on the other side. He's definitely being told by... Pet Udom has definitely been told by his corner to, to, to fire off the elbows. Yeah, I think that Omar just doesn't understand how to... Oh, there's the right elbow, and then I think that's it. Yep, waved off appropriately. So I think I bumped up my crystal balls. Fortune telling abilities to 22%. <laughs> we'll get to see some of the replays, but mainly it was the hand control of Pet Udom that got him the win. Just controlled the hands, came over with the elbows. You see some of the bicep control. And also knowing how to position his head, there's that bicep control. The left elbow, then the right. And Prem Busara Bhavan Wongs will hand out the award.
โหดเชียงราท่านะครับเพชรอิดมเปียกอุดมนะครับสอบสายหน้าได้นับ8นะครับแล้วก็มาผดิตศึกด้วยสอขวาเข้าเต็มกลามครับแน่นอนครับรางวัลผู้ชนะน็อกฟีแน่นอนครับจากแฟร์เทคคิวฟิตเมนชูมือกันก่อนนะครับแล้วก็ผู้ชนะในคู่นี้เป็นนักชกจากจังหวัดนครราชสีมาประเทศไทยของเราเพชรอุดมเกียรติอุดมครับขออนุญาตมาเพียงเชิญครับเสียเปรมอริยวัตรบุษราบวรวงครับจากแฟร์เทคฟิคิปเมนต์เป็นตัวแทนของเสียบรรจงบุษราบวรวงครับมอบโบนัสให้กับผู้ชนะน็อกนั่นก็คือเพชรกุดมเกียรติกุดมจำนวนเงิน 10,000 บาทยินดีกับผู้ชนะเป็นกำลังใจให้ผู้แพ้ครับช่วงนี้พักกันสักครู่หนึ่งก่อนนะครับช่วงหน้าเดี๋ยวมาดูการกลับมาของอภิสิทธิ์แฟร์เทควันเสาร์ที่9เดือน9ครับเดินทางมาถึงคู่เอกของรายการเป็นไฮไลท์ของวันนี้ทีเดียวครับในพิกัดน้ำหนัก65กิโลกรัมนักมวยทางด้านมุมดำจากประเทศอิหร่านมิลาดบาเกอรี่ So here we go into our next bout here Milad Bagari another Iranian at 30 years old standing at 182 centimeters 29 bouts to his record, 20 wins, 8 losses, 1 draw. And again, fighting out Bizad Warrior Muay Thai, Bizad Warrior Academy. The gym located down in the hood in Patia. Not far from Bangkok, about two hours south. Hour and a half depends on how fast you drive. If Joe is driving, I think it might only take you a half an hour. <laughs> Very good, Matt. Very good. <laughs> I'm a bit wild on the streets of Bangkok. I've actually ridden on the back of your motorbike before. You're quite conservative. <laughs> well, you have to. You have to be if you've crashed as many times as me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So we turn it over to our MC for today, Mr. Pong and Mark Abbott will be back next week. Great to have Mr. Pong step up to the action, though. และผู้ชมของเขานะครับจากอำเภอจตุรัสจังหวัดชายภูมิประเทศไทยอภิสิทธิ์แฟร์เทค Coming into the red corner. Is Abhisit Fairtex representing Thailand? Abhisit, at the age of 35, standing at 170 centimeters, as a fight record of 90 fights, 70 wins, 18 losses, and two draws. I am super excited to introduce Abhisit. I have been a fan of Abhisit for a very long time. I've seen him fight in Sydney. I actually fought on the same show as him. He came out with the win on that show with ferocious leg kicks, actually fighting my trainer at the time. Happy Sit is a former Channel 7 fighter with heavy hands, heavy low kicks, explosive power, high IQ. So very excited to see Happy Sit come back to Thailand. He did a bit of a stint over in Canada. He was in Australia for a little bit. So, very, very exciting to see a b b y s i d fight this morning. This is the highlight of the day. In the 
ับกับแฟนเทคไฟมวยมันพันเอสซีมครับนักชกทางด้านของมุมดำเป็นนักชกจากประเทศอิรานเทคไฟเตอร์อินเดอะแบล็กคอนเนอร์ฟรอมอิรานมิลาดมาเกอรี่มุมแดงครับเป็นนักชกจากประเทศไทยครับจากจังหวัดชายภูมิ from Thailand อภิสิทธิ์แฟนเทคผู้ชี้ขาดบนเวที10เอกกฤษดาพลตื้ Here we go with the tail of the tip อภิสิทธิ์ Fair Texas versus Malad Bagari We'll see how things go as Channel 7 veteran a p i s i t takes on relatively newcomer Milad. a p i s i t has fought a number of high-level athletes, according to n u d i n o the other Thai commentator. He's taking on b a t s e n l e k r a c h a n o n s Sing Payak, more r a c h a b a n j u m b i n g t a l a m t o n g s i t b a n n o t and Yad p a n o m r u n g k i p m o n g n o n amongst others. And he's coming in with that classic style that Apisit is known for, straight up the top and hacking the leg kick. Yeah, he has a frame for it. His frame is definitely built for hard leg kicks. I do believe at one point he was training at Sipman Chai. Oh, he was. He I was. Him and his twin brother, along with his younger brother, about. A decade ago, we're training and fighting regularly out of s i m o n t a i Jim was actually there at the time, so I've known a p i s i t for close to 10 years, 11, I think 11 years. Then uh, a p i s i t fought and trained out of Diaz Combat Sports in Canada for a little bit, and I think that right hand rocked m i l a n Oh, I think your crystal ball might have been right, Joe. Just one round. We'll see how things progress. So, yeah, I'll put. I I would put money on it that this is probably not going to see the end of the first round. I think. And again, a short leg kick there from Happy Sit. Oh, short right hand, but right on the button, stunning Milad. Oh, body shots. Just a p i s i t has got so much power in those hands. Absolute venom. Oh, and that arm control into the elbow from a p i s i t We have just one minute left here, and m i l a d has worn a lot of damage. You see it on his face. A little bit of blood there. Short left hook. Oh, and cracked him with that right cross. And the legs of Milad are also damaged. You see a p i s i t s son there in the red shirt, 17, 16 years old, started fighting as well. a p i s i t really letting the leather fly. I think it's a matter of time here. That leg already reddened and damaged. Uh, he will survive the first round, but be interesting to see what happens in the second. So it seems I've lost my money, but that's all right. So we'll go and have a look at some of the replays there. Ah, oh, ferocious leg kicks there from a b i s i t Very classic Moy Mat style. Yeah, a testament to Millard for standing in there with such a veteran. Any room to breathe? What do you think, Matt? Yeah, I would totally agree with that. You know, the kryptonite for the Moy Mat is generally the just clinching up and driving in the knees. We'll see how things progress in this second round, though. You can see a p i s i t applying the body lock there, trying to negate some of those punches. And interestingly enough, a p i s 
bicep is racking up those big long kicks to the bicep. It's not something I've really seen much from him. Yeah, short elbow there. Abhisit is also a twin. His brother Abhisat, another fighter. Then they have a younger brother who's a fighter as well. I think it's Abhilak. I believe he comes from Buriram as well. Chayapum, rather. There's that leg kick from Abhisit. Oh, beautiful sweep there from the Thai athlete. An up elbow. And that'll be playing on the confidence of Millard there being dumped like that. But there we go. That's a nice little strategy there from Millard. That's what he should be doing. Oh, I think he was trying to play tough there and got rocked. And he, he's heavily rocked. He looked up at the clock. There's a lot of time for Abhisit to finish him off here. I think it's going to be hard for Milad to recover. Great foot is pushed there from Abhisit. Yeah, Abhisit took full advantage of that moment. It's a bit of a silly thing to do is stand in front of like that and somebody like Abhisit and play the tough guy. Yeah, some athletes will do that. Mohammed Siras Arani did that against Siddhartai last night here at one. And you see, oh, he's dizzy. He turned around and then just waved off. I think there was a big cut as well. Yeah, it was oh, a and <laughs> Milad taking a seat. I think that last elbow, that last shot really took it out of Milad. So Abhisit will be walking back, walking home at 10,000 baht richer. So here's the replays. Leg kick there from Abhisit. Just had all the weapons against Milan. Short elbow there from Abhisit. Again, that short elbow passing over that overhand right. That's a lot of power from Abhisit. Boom. Caught him with that right hand and then Milad just stood there. It looks like he got frozen in his tracks. Bam, and elbow right on the chin. Wave off from the referee. ครับและผู้เอกของรายการเป็นผู้ไฮไลท์วันนี้ได้ชมข่าวสายตากันไปแล้วเรียบร้อยครับแน่นอนครับไปชัยชนะของนักชกชนะของปุ๊บแดงคร
ขครับนี่แหละครับอายุเท่าไหร่ไม่สําคัญครับความมุ่งมั่นตั้งใจต่างหากนําไปสู่ชัยชนะได้ชนะน้องสวยๆแบบนี้นะครับจะได้รับโบนัส 10,000 บาทจากแฟนเด็กทูพิเมนขออนุญาตกราบเรียนเชิญเสียเปรมอาริยวัตรกุศลาประวัติโบกครับได้มอบเงินรางวัลโบนัส 10,000 บาทจากแฟนเด็กทูพิเมนให้กับอภิสิทธิ์แฟนเด็กครับโอ้โหหายไป10ปีครับไม่ใช่ปัญหาเลยนะครับความตั้งใจสูงยิ่งแล้วก็ประสบความสำเร็จสวยงามครับไหนๆก็อยู่บนเวทีเรียบร้อยนะครับนี่คือผู้ดำเนินการจากการแข่งขันแฟนเด็กไฟมวยมันพันเอ็กซ์ตีมเสิร์ฟความมันทุกวันเสาร์ตั้งแต่เวลา10นาฬิกาถึง12นาฬิกาเสียเปรมอารีวัตรุตรารบวรวงนะครับขออนุญาตเรียนถามเลยนะครับว่ามวยรอบรองชนะเลิศสำหรับมวยรอบรถทูวันไทยแลนด์ซีซั่น2จะเกิดขึ้นเมื่อไหร่ครับแน่นอนครับสำหรับรถทูวันซีซั่น2นะครับเกิดขึ้นวันที่23กันยายนนะครับผมก็จะเป็นรอบรองชนะเลิศนะครับผมก็ดีครับได้มีนักกีฬาคนหนึ่งแล้วที่ได้เข้าไปได้สัญญากับวันชาเป็นทีมครับจะบอกว่าเป็นการประสบความสําเร็จทางลัดก็ว่าได้นะสําหรับมวยรอบรถทูวันไทยแลนด์ซีซั่น2เพราะว่าชก3ครั้งชนะรวดนิดไปชิงสัญญาในมูลมูลค่าสัญญาที่3ล้านห้าแสนบาททันทีใช่ครับผมถูกต้องแล้วครับก็อย่างที่บอกว่าเวทีแฟนเทคเนี่ยเป็นเวทีที่ให้โอกาสนักกีฬาดาวรุ่งรุ่นใหม่นะครับคนคนที่ดูอาจจะยังไม่เข้าใจว่าเฮ้ยทำไมเราเอาเด็กใหม่ใหม่ขึ้นมานี่แหละครับเราจะปั้นเขาให้โอกาสเขาให้เขามีชีวิตที่ดีขึ้นได้ครับก็ประสบความสําเร็จหลายๆคนพอจบจากสัมเวียนแห่งนี้โชว์ฟอร์มสวยมีเส้นทางเดินยังไงให้นักมวยต่อครับแน่นอนครับมีแน่นอนครับอย่างที่บอกผู้ชนะเนี่ยก็จะได้สัญญาไปวันแชมป์แชมป์แน่นอนจะได้ทําการอุ่นเครื่องไปในกับรายการวันดีก่อนนะครับพออุ่นเครื่องจะสองสแมตช์เนี่ยคิดว่าพร้อมแล้วเจอกันที่วันแชมป์แชมป์ใหญ่แน่นอนครับก็เรียกว่าปูทางแล้วก็ปูเงินไว้นะครับอยู่ที่น้องๆจะสามารถเก็บเกี่ยวความสําเร็จได้หรือไม่ได้ผู้หลักผู้ใหญ่เนี่ยทําทางไว้ให้แล้วจริงๆก็เป็นความร่วมมือจัดกับการกีฬาแห่งประเทศไทยจัดมวยรากหญ้าสู่สากลทั่วประเทศมาด้วยถูกต้องครับผมก็รู้สึกดีใจครับที่ได้มีการกีฬาได้เข้ามาช่วยแล้วก็ให้โอกาสกับเด็กที่อยู่ต่างจังหวัดที่ไม่ค่อยมีโอกาสที่ได้ต่อยกรุงเทพนะครับแล้วก็ได้มีโอกาสมาต่อยที่แฟร์เทคไฟเนี่ยครับผมกับคุณเปรมได้ตระเวนไปดูทั่วประเทศแล้วนะครับเพราะอกพอใจกับความกระตือรือร้นของนักมวยรุ่นใหม่ๆมากเลยครับผมคิดว่านักกีฬานะครับได้มีความฝันมากขึ้นนะครับทีนี้เขาสามารถได้มองว่าผลทางในชีวิตการเป็นมวยของเขาเนี่ยไปได้ไกลขนาดไหนนี่คือสิ่งที่สำคัญเพราะแต่ก่อนนั้นเนี่ยมวยไทยก็อยู่แค่ประเทศไทยแต่เดี๋ยวนี้มวยไทยมีทั้งระดับสุดยอดเอ้อพูดง่ายเริ่มต้นจากแฟนเทคไฟนะครับเป็นพวกเด็กปั้นขาดาวรุ่งแล้วก็ขึ้นมาสุดยอดของประเทศไทยก็คือวันลุมเบนีแล้วก็ไปถึงระดับโลกก็คือวันแชมเปี้ยนชีพครับก็เรียกว่าน้องๆทุกคนนะครับมีเป้าหมายมีความชัดเจนกับเป้าหมายมากยิ่งขึ้นจะเห็นได้เลยนะครับว่านอกจากน้องๆน,นักมวยรุ่นใหม่ๆแล้วนะครับนักมวยรุ่นเก่าๆอายุเกิน30มหลายๆคนก็กลับมาเรียกฟอร์มที่ดีครั้งหนึ่งมีความตั้งใจกลับไปครั้งหนึ่งยกตัวอย่างอย่างอภิสิทธิ์แฟร์เทคเมื่อสักครู่ใช่ครับอย่างที่บอกเราไม่ปิดโอกาสรเราเป็นเวทีแค่ให้กับโอกาสนักกีฬาทุกคนนะครับพอผมเชื่อว่าทุกคนเนี่ยที่เก่งๆไม่แต่ก่อนในที่ต้องหยุดมวยพอบางทีเขาไม่มีขนทางไปทางเดียวก็คือไปเป็นเทรนเนอร์ต่างประเทศแต่ณวันนี้เขามองเห็นแล้วว่าร่างกายเขายังไหวที่จะต่อสู้กับนักกีฬาที่เก่งที่สุดในประเทศไทยหรือทั่วโลกได้เขาก็อยากกลับมาโชว์ฝีมือให้กับคนรุ่นมันได้ดูว่าคนเก่าๆเนี่ยแหละยังเจ๋งยังเก่งอยู่ใช่ครับทุกอย่างครับอยู่ที่หัวใจล้วนๆนะครับถ้าเกิดมีความมุ่งมั่นตั้งใจไปได้ไกลแน่นอนครับยกตัวอย่างอย่างอภิสิทธิ์แฟร์เทคเมื่อสักครู่นะครับลุ้นผลงานของเขากันต่อย้ำอีกครั้งหนึ่งครับโดยความร่วมมือของช่อง7 HD เทโรเอนเตอร์เทนเมนต์นะครับแล้วก็แฟร์เทคนะครับก็จัดร่วมกันนะครับแฟร์เทคไฟมวยมันพันเอสซีมทุกวันเสาร์ตั้งแต่เวลา10นาฬิกาถึง12นาฬิกานะครับก็ฝากไปด้วยแล้วกันนะครับรายการใหญ่ของวันลูบินีวันศุกร์ที่22กันยายนครับมาดูว่
ขอบพระคุณนะครับผู้สนับสนุนรายการของเราครับไม่มีท่านไม่มีเราครับขอบคุณช่อง7 HD กด35เทโรเอนเตอร์เทนเมนต์อุปกรณ์มวยแฟทิกส์สนามมวยเวทีลูปินียุทธสปอร์ตเกียร์ปุ๋ยท็อปวันและเวเบอร์ตราตุ๊กแกครับวันนี้เวลาหมดหมดเวลานะครับผมแล้วก็คุณเปรมอริวัตรบุษลาบวรวงคงจะลาไปพร้อมกันพบกันใหม่โอกาสหน้าขอบพระคุณทุกการติดตามสวัสดีครับ